to say. No, Mikey. No, no, Mikey. That was so not right. Two years ago today, one of the most legendary and controversial races in F1 history happened where a Red Bull driver overtook a Mercedes driver on the last lap of the race. Let's take a look at it. All right, all kidding aside, yes, yes, yes. Very, very nice pass from Yuki Tsunoda. That's something that's forgotten about because of what actually happened in this race uh, in terms of the championship fight that was happening. Uh, but we're going to talk about it today. I didn't talk about it last year. I don't know why. But yes, two years ago today, two years and about three hours ago today, the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix was about to go lights out at the time of this recording, not the posting of this video. But we're going to talk about it all. We're going to talk about me looking back at it, remembering that day or that year, really, just 2021 is a year. Uh, we're going to talk about the actual controversy itself. We're going to talk about both controversies in that race themselves. And then we're going to talk about the future, everything that happened after that. So 2022, 2023, and how it kind of changed the F1 world in a sense. And because people still look back at this race today uh, as a big moment in F1's history because it was. It was one of the most iconic title fights in F1 history. Um, it had so many legendary F1 moments <laughs> that happened that year between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. So we're going to talk about it today and I'm going to read you some numbers and stuff after 2021. Uh, so yeah, I guess we'll start with that, that race itself. Yeah, the build up to this race was insane. Abu Dhabi oh my god um just has never really produced great racing honestly uh so the fact that they had a race this hyped up is a miracle um that track once again no disrespect it's just never put on the greatest racing i'm sorry and for once this race was hyped for once it was like this is going to be epic i actually was optimistic for the racing i was like this is going to be a good race and um the, the race itself was meh. It was better than your average Abu Dhabi race. The 2020 Abu Dhabi race, I fell asleep during because it was like 8 a.m. And, you know, I was tired. But, uh, yeah, so anyways, point being, this race was so hyped up. This championship battle had had so many moments, whether they were cool, whether it was, you know, epic racing. But it also had its controversies. You look at Silverstone, you look at Monza, you look at Brazil, Saudi Arabia. There were a lot of moments in this title fight that either produced, you know, chaos and just, you know, toxicity in terms of the championship fight. You go online and see people fighting about it. Verstappen fans, Hamilton fans, everyone's fighting each other. And then you also had some good moments, some really good fights. You had the strategic, you know, trickery between Spain, Mercedes taking over, the lead late in that race to win uh, with Lewis Hamilton, and then Red Bull essentially flips the script in France and does the same thing. Uh, we saw some head-to-head -head battles for the win. Remember early on, early at the season at Bahrain, the first race of the season, in fact, it came down to the last few laps in that one. No contact made, but a little bit of controversy after Verstappen passed Hamilton because he went off the track, had to give the position back. And of course, uh, that race went down to the last lap. Hamilton only won by like six tenths of a second, maybe. That's maybe it's more, but uh, that really early on, we knew like, okay, this is like legit. Red Bull has the speed. Verstappen's got the speed. Like, we could have a threat to Lewis Hamilton's championship streak here because um, it seemed a foregone conclusion. I know Red Bull had improved in 2020, but it seemed like that Lewis Hamilton was going to get his record-breaking eighth title, but that was not the case. Now, I know I just kind of went on a side tangent about all of 2021. We're here to talk about Abu Dhabi. Oh my gosh. the As I said, the build-up to this race, the hype before this race, I can't remember another race having this much hype. Maybe Vegas. Maybe. Maybe. And that's just because I love Vegas and stuff. But seriously, this race, the anticipation for it, the entire week leading up. Remember, the week before was the first ever Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. It was very controversial in itself with the whole red flags. Verstappen forcing Hamilton off. Hamilton forcing Verstappen off. The brake checking. It was a mess of a race. 
and the result was we're coming to Abu Dhabi. Second time in history, I think, we're coming into season finale with the points tied in terms of the Drivers' Championship. And these two had been at the top of their game. I think they Hamilton had seven wins, eight wins. I can tell you, actually. Verstappen had nine wins coming into this race. Hamilton had eight wins. Obviously, even on points, lots of controversy, as we've already talked about. But the fact of the matter is they're coming into this race, a race that a racetrack that historically had been a Mercedes track. And it's going to come down to who finishes highest, unless they both DNF. In that case, Verstappen was the world champion because he had the tiebreaker with more wins. And that was something I remember being talked about leading up to the race. It was talked about if anyone pulls any kind of stunt, like if Max Verstappen did what Michael Schumacher did in 1994, did what Senna did in 1990, that, you know, he's disqualified. He's out. Nope. Hamilton's the champion. I remember there was a lot of talk about that. A lot of people on the internet were like, I think Max Verstappen's going to pull a stunt. He didn't pull a stunt, obviously. But uh, the fact of the matter was there was a lot of talk in a lot of different directions about a lot of things. But then it came to race day, and I remember I could not sleep. I was so excited because there was an actual championship fight, and it came down to the last race, and it was natural. Unlike NASCAR, who has a stupid playoff system where they force this every year. If you're an F1 fan and have no idea what I'm talking about, good. You don't want to know. NASCAR is dumb with their championship format. Great racing, stupid championship format. Anyways, um, random side rant there. I remember not sleeping. Seriously. Uh, this, this race is like a 7 a.m. start, as I said, locally over here in the U.S. of A. And I did not sleep a lot because I was so excited. This championship fight had been so epic. It had so many epic moments. I didn't want it to end, but it had to. And I wanted to see who won it. Uh, so I remember watching the pre-race. I, I don't get to watch a lot of the pre-race for F1 because I'm sleeping usually. And I'm watching the whole thing. I'm watching Martin Br Brundle's Gridwalk, all this and then the national anthem hits. They got the championship trophies in between because technically the constructors hadn't been locked up, but it would have taken a miracle for Red Bull to win the constructors. And uh, they line the drivers up across from each other. They're playing the national anthem. It's all hype. It's epic. It's like, this is happening. This is like 10 minutes away. Um, so then we get to the actual race at the line. Uh, I'm not a Max Verstappen or Lewis Hamilton fan, but I feel like this is the point that I tell you. I was indeed rooting for Max Verstappen. Because I wanted to see a new champion, okay? I'm sorry. Once again, I'm not a Max Verstappen fan. I'm not a Lewis Hamilton fan. I respect them both. I think they both have tons of talent. They are both all-time greats, okay? I love them both. There. You happy? Don't yell at me for being biased, please. Then we get to the race start. Verstappen was on pole at a track that was, as I said, Mercedes. Yes, he had won the year before, but it was more of a Mercedes power track. And Verstappen was on pole. And that was a little bit of a shock to me, if you ask. And then Lewis Hamilton took the lead like five feet into the race. And I was like, well, congratulations, Lewis Hamilton. You're an eight-time world champion. You can't do uh, anything on this track in terms of passing. It's over. Goodbye. Uh, I'm done. No, I didn't actually say that. But then I was like, all right, well, that sucks. And then turn six, turn six happened. And um, I got to say, this is something I think isn't talked about enough because, honestly, Hamilton didn't get penalized at all for this. It, it, it's a little bit ironic that Hamilton, Verstappen dive-bombed Hamilton, but it was nowhere as bad as what happened in Brazil a few weeks before, and it was identical to what Hamilton did the week before in Saudi Arabia. Verstappen sent it from far back, yes, but he stayed within the track limits, he did not make contact with Hamilton. Hamilton completely cut the chicane, and he did not get a penalty, which I found interesting, to say the least. Um, yeah, that's so interesting. I do not know how that wasn't a penalty. He completely cut the chicane, and because he lifted off the gas for a couple seconds, that was giving it back. They were side by side entering the corner, but somehow Hamilton giving up a half second was giving it back. Uh, so I'm not going to lie, that was a little dumb. And then what makes it funnier is the next year, lap one, 2022, almost the exact same thing happens where Sainz kind of dive bombs Hamilton, not as aggressively. Hamilton shortcuts the chicane, gets back ahead of Sainz, and then you know what happens? Hamilton is told to give the position back. One year later, almost the exact same situation, Hamilton is told to give the position back. I just don't, I really 
Really don't understand how they didn't make him give that position back. Lap one, um, that was the biggest robbery in F1 history. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, some Lewis Hamilton fans are probably triggered if they're watching this. Uh, but yeah, so lap one was controversial. Yeah, so then we go on through the race and the Perez holding up Hamilton thing was cool, but then Hamilton just pulled away anyways. And by lap 45, I was like, all right, like this thing's actually over. Like it would take a literal miracle from God for Max Verstappen to catch up. And Nicholas Latifi was that miracle from God, I guess. Lap 52, we're talking about it, baby. Nicholas Latifi crashes. And um, and if this had happened like three laps earlier, we wouldn't be talking about this today, about being a controversy. But because he crashed on lap 52, because they had to clean it up, get his car off, there was a safety car, all that stuff, this is where the controversy came in. There is a rule in the F1 rule book that if you are going to let lap cars pass the safety car and get the lead lap back, essentially, you have to give them a full lap to get back on track or to catch up with the leaders to get back to the tail end of the pack. And then the safety car can take off. You can restart the race. Well, yeah, that didn't happen. Like, look, as I said, the lap one thing can be debatable, whatever. And I said that I gave you my opinion, which was that Hamilton should have given the position position back. This, the, what happened here is not controversial. It's like pretty black and white. Like they didn't follow the rules. Like, as I said, I was rooting for Verstappen here, but like, it's pretty blatantly obvious. They, they, broke the rules here. <laughs> Anyways, they allow like four or five lap cars to go back, get their lap back, and then like a quarter of a lap later, like, all right, safety car's over. One lap shootout. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Do something epic, would you? Of course, Verstappen has fresher tires at this point. And uh, then we, we get the restart going. We go to turn five. And Max Verstappen in 2021, if he has shown one thing, it is aggression. He showed that aggression once more. And he sent it down the inside of Lewis Hamilton. It was not as bad as Brazil. It was not as bad as turn one. But he showed aggression. And Lewis Hamilton, he really likes to leave the door open is what I've learned here. He did it in turn one on lap one. He did it here. And um, Verstappen takes the lead, runs on, gets the race win. Blah, blah, blah. Here we are two years later. So where do I stand now two years later? What are my thoughts? What are my emotions about it? As I said, I have no ties to Red Bull, Mercedes, Max Verstappen, Lewis Hamilton. So I don't feel super raw emotions to it. I don't feel like if I'm a Red Bull fan, I'm not like, oh, it's the greatest day ever. Oh, December 12th. I'm so happy. <laughs> and if I'm a Mercedes fan, I'm not like, December 12th. I hate this day. <sighs> you know, there's there's no, I don't feel any of that because I'm in the middle. As I said, I'm in the middle. But I do look back. I look back at an iconic championship fight. I look back at every moment in 2021. But when I think about Abu Dhabi, I will admit it does leave a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth because it was such an iconic championship fight. It's the best championship fight I've seen in my years of watching racing because NASCAR, once again, does not know how to do a championship fight properly. So the, the fact that I got to see a proper championship fight made me very happy and was very satisfying. And everything up to this point, up to Abu Dhabi, was amazing. I loved it all. Even the bad stuff. Even Silverstone when Hamilton wrecked Verstappen. Even Saudi Arabia when Verstappen was pulling some um, antics, I guess we want to call it. The fact of the matter is, it was an epic championship fight. And if Abu Dhabi went normally... normally if Abu Dhabi, that last lap happened naturally, if that safety car happens three laps earlier and we get that one lap shootout without the whole only letting a few uh, cars go past the safety car, if we actually followed the rule book there and that last lap pass actually happened like the way it was supposed to do through the rule books, that would have gone down as maybe the most iconic championship fight in F1 history. I'm sure some F1 historian is, you know, arguing differently. Many people are going to say 2008. Many people are going to say something, you know, with Senna and Prost, maybe. Maybe Michael Schumacher, one of his championship fights, whether it was with Jack Villeneuve, Damon Hill, whoever it may be. People are going to argue different. I think it would have been. It's still one of the most iconic title fights, but there is a little bit of a bad taste just because of how it ended. Now, I still think Verstappen was the best driver that year. 
I still think he was the more deserving champion. I think both guys were deserving of a championship that year. They both drove championship caliber years. They had championship level stats. But the fact of the matter is they both did it in the same year. So only one of them could win the championship. Verstappen led 652 laps that year. Hamilton led 297. 10 wins versus 8. 17 podiums versus 18 podiums. You know, it was very close all year around. And you're going to make a lot of arguments. You're going to argue oh, well, Hamilton should have won the championship because they broke the rules. But then Verstappen fans are going to counter and say, well, the only reason we got to that point is because Hamilton wrecked Verstappen at Great Britain and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, so that's a long time of me looking back at it, giving you my raw emotions, I guess, on it. Uh, two years later, I'm not hurt by it. I'm not I guess, made by it, but I still look back on 2021 as a whole as an iconic championship fight, something I remember dearly. I was at one of the races. It was great, but in terms of the actual finale at Abu Dhabi, there is a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth, but the, the fact of the matter is I still acknowledge Max Verstappen as the champion. I still acknowledge him as the winner of that race because that's how it went down. That's how it was, and Max Verstappen was a deserving champion that year. It's not like he had two wins and like three podiums that year, and that's how he won the championship over Lewis Hamilton, winning eight races and having 18 podiums. So, um, yeah, uh, now looking into the future, and this is where it gets crazy. I know we talked a lot about the past here, but moving on to the future is where it's crazy. If I told you the win differential between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton was 34 to 0 in favor of Verstappen. You might have guessed that Lewis Hamilton retired. There was a bit there during the 2021 offseason that I thought Lewis Hamilton was going to retire because he had shut himself out from the world. I don't blame him. That is a horrible way to lose a championship. But there were people like, is he going to retire? He hasn't said anything. He hasn't done any interviews. He hasn't shown up to anything. Um... Well, he's raced in 2022 and 2023 and has not won a race since Saudi Arabia 2021. Uh, obviously not his doing. The Mercedes, the new era, the new generation of car has not been good to Mercedes. Uh, they have yet to build a championship caliber car. Heck, they barely built a race winning car. They've only had one race win in the last two years. It was George Russell at Brazil in 2022. The numbers, as I said, are absolutely mind-boggling there have been 44 races since that Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in 2021 and as I said it's mind-boggling Verstappen 34 wins Lewis Hamilton zero Lewis Hamilton podiums 15 Max Verstappen had 15 wins in 2022 alone Max Verstappen had 20 uh, 19 wins in 2023 alone so Verstappen has e either had the same amount of wins as Hamilton has had podiums over the same two years or had more it's mind-blowing. Verstappen's had 38 podiums. He's led over 1,600 laps. Hamilton has led 59 laps in that span. So obviously, that's more of a car differential. Red Bull's had the most dominant car. Mercedes has barely scraped race-winning pace, and you know, that's a big difference there, but it really is, it's a little bit almost, I don't know if poetic's the right word, but it's like an a passing of the torch. Hamilton didn't want to pass the torch, obviously, but we moved from the Hamilton era from 20, 2014 to 2020 was the Lewis Hamilton era with a little kind of middle random Rosberg in there. And then 2021 was a mix of Verstappen and Hamilton and Verstappen ended up coming up on top. And that is when we transitioned to the Max Verstappen era, which is what we are in today. Max Verstappen has gone on to win a buttload of races, two world championships. Two years and three hours ago, Max Verstappen had zero world championships. Two years and three hours later, he has three world championships. So, so we have talked about my thoughts on the day, my remembrance of the day. That sounds bad. It sounds like I'm talking about someone who died. Um, but no, we talked about the day itself. We talked about the race itself, what happened. We talked about the controversy, looking back at it. I'm sure a lot of you still have emotions about it. If you do, let me know in the comments. And of course, we look towards the future. 2022 and 2023 has been very kind to Max Verstappen. 
not been kind to Lewis Hamilton. He's still looking for his first win since that iconic title fight. Uh, but thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I know it was a super long one, but the fact of the matter is this was such an iconic championship fight and this was such a defining moment in F1's history. Not just the championship, but this race itself. So many changes were made in F1 from, you know, just the race director standpoint and all that. And we now see what F1 is today in terms of the changes that have been made and you know, the cars are different. You can't talk to the, you can't like negotiate your penalties with the FIA anymore in race. So uh, lots of changes have been made. Uh, the championship battle will always be known as one of the most iconic, yet one of the most controversial. Uh, I think Crofty's line uh, at the end of that race, when Hamilton and Verstappen were battling on the last up, when he said this race that started in controversy is going to end in controversy. I felt like that was a good way to state it. Lap one, I still think Hamilton should have given the position back, would have made the race a little bit more interesting. And then as for the end, yeah, Hamilton kind of got screwed, but at the same time, Verstappen was kind of a more deserving champion. Not that Hamilton wasn't, but you guys get my point. I read you the numbers. Thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, subscribe, all that stuff, and I'll post more videos throughout the week, uh, throughout the rest of the year. Off-season video time. Woo.